What does a healthy expression of the body of Christ look like? Are the fivefold gifts needed in the church to reach that health today? Why should that matter to me? These issues and more we'll explore in today's episode of Word Search with me, Christopher Dryden, where we're on episode number 17, God's Bodybuilders, Putting Them Together. Word Search is a place to search God's Word and a time for God's Word to search us, where we encourage godly character development with the idea to stimulate seeking God's kingdom first and his righteousness in hope that that will inform and transform our prayer and practice knowing that here at Word Search we're keen to find treasure in God's Word so that we can be hearers and doers of his Word for his glory. On this episode of Word Search, we'll be exploring first of all our journey on our series of God's Fit Body Plan to this point. Then we'll have our reading of Ephesians chapter 4 verses 11 to 16 before we look carefully at what it is to put all of the things that we've looked at together. Then we'll also explore why it matters before considering carefully the conclusions that we reach from this exploration to this point. We'll be having a look as ever at the hints that we're reviewing about how God's body plan fits together and then looking a bit at the bigger picture that will help to steer us as to what the next steps will be before we consider some key prayer points. Previously on Word Search, we're looking at a series called God's Fit Body Plan based on the knowledge that every believer is a member of the body of Christ and that means every believer belongs in genuine Christian fellowship. And as a part of God's plan, he wants his body to function so that every part of the body is fit for function to have a healthy body for his glory. How we did that was first we had a look at the overview of the book of Ephesians and then we looked at Ephesians chapter 4 and in particular verses 11 to 16. There we saw how Jesus is the foundation of the body of Christ. It is built on the firm foundation of who Jesus is and he indeed is the example and from there we saw that Jesus has given to the body the apostle and we explored the role of the apostle in both expanding the word of God and the kingdom of God to set up new expressions of the body of Christ as well as ensuring that those expressions are supported from within. We also looked at the role of the prophet to be the mouthpiece for what God has to say to stimulate us to likewise look to be mouthpieces to only say what God wants us to say for correcting and building each other. From there we considered the role of the evangelist and the crucial role that the evangelist has in stimulating the body of Christ to recognize that we share the good news to those who need to hear it. We also considered the crucial role of the shepherd and how they are there to help to nurture, protect and enrich the body of Christ as Christ has called it. And then we considered carefully the role of the teacher last time in our time here at Word Search. And we looked at how the teacher is there to build believers on the standard of the truth and the wisdom that God gives. All of this with the mind that Jesus is our goal. All of these you can find out in the other episodes that we've recorded previously in this series about God's Fit Body Plan. Uh, and you can find that playlist in the link on your screen now. We've been exploring these with the heart and the mind to discover that as a part of the body, it's good to know how you fit and then how we all fit together to function as God wants us to. At this time, let's have a look carefully at our core scripture of Ephesians chapter 4 verses 11 to 16 as read by my friend Shirley Evans. Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists and the pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. 
Then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Thank you so much for the reading of the scripture, Shirley. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we thank you for the good things that you have done and you have expressed to us in your word. It's our desire that we explore your word once more and summarizing, get a holistic view of how those five gifts that you've given to the body are there to help us to grow to be more like your son, Jesus Christ, for your honor and for your glory. Open our minds and our hearts to have the understanding with the desire to put into action everything that your word requires of us at this time, as we look to you and give you thanks in Jesus' name. Okay, so let's consider what we're doing when we put all of the things that we've discovered together. As you can see, I've spared no expense in the uh, graphic design of a body. Uh, and so here, first thing that we've discovered is that there is the body of Christ, but it's crucial to know that the head of the body is Christ. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, there'll be uh, another analogy made of the body, and we'll see that Paul will go on to describe how some might see themselves as the eyes and the ears and etc etc but here in ephesians it's crucial for us to realize that the head the one in charge and the source of everything that helps the body to function is jesus christ himself that's very important to discover and the next thing it's important for us to consider is what does the body do and it's my conviction as we've seen in this series so far that the body first of all it grows to maturity in christ then the body does the work of the ministry. Jesus gives the body the gifts that in essence reflects him and enables the body to operate and to grow. So a healthy body has each part functioning well on the right diet prepared to grow. Now, I will break that down uh, by answering a few questions such as this next question. How does the body grow? Think about your own body. I would suggest that your body grows both by what it takes in and what it works out. So by your diet and your lifestyle, as you're told. So on that basis, in a similar way, we're told that the body of Christ grows by what it takes in, what it, what it consumes and what it works out. And how that, that expresses itself is always based on the reality that we remember this is Jesus's body. He is in charge. That's why he's the head. Everything has to be considered in that perspective. So everything flows from him. He's the one who's in charge. And as we saw in the scripture that we read, how he gets his body to grow is through the giftings of the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. And we've gone through each one of those in some detail in the previous sessions. But I'm looking at how those work together to actually reflect who Jesus is. Now, follow me carefully. If you had a business and in that business, you were told that you had uh, an electrician, a plumber, a carpenter, um, a gardener and a decorator. If you knew that you had those five particular roles in that business, that would give you a good idea of what you're expecting people to know and find out and get from that particular business those five particular key functions in a similar way when jesus outlines these five particular gifts it indicates what people should expect from the body of christ that is they should expect a body that is functioning working out what it is to reach others working out what it is to communicate the word of god what it is to reach out with the good news of who Jesus is, what it is to care with the love of God, and what it is to grow in the character of the Lord Jesus Christ. That should be what the body of Christ 
it's all about what it takes in and what it works out and that's how the body grows that's why it's crucial that the body has that expression of the apostolic the prophetic the evangelistic the shepherding and the teaching a lack of these means an unhealthy body don't take my word for it consider what jesus says himself on this matter when he has inspired paul to write this to the church to let them know how jesus expresses himself through his body and that's all with the desire that they should grow up to be like him that should be the goal another question to consider then is what is a healthy body what's a healthy expression of the body of the lord jesus christ so clearly we can see that a healthy body is one that has those five aspects working together both in example and in instruction because the whole point of those five is not to do the work but to actually equip the saints to do the work so that the whole body is carrying on with the reaching out to others informing others with what the word of god says establishing the foundation of the kingdom of god wherever we are nurturing and caring for each other so that we're protected from evil and are aligned to good and we're ever keen to expand the kingdom of god as we share the good news of jesus christ as we look for that to reach into areas that haven't been reached as well whether that's in generations or cultures or ethnicities whatever it is we have that compassion to not just reach out to them but likewise to see them shaped formed and guided to becoming more and more like jesus every day that's what a healthy body should really look like it's a body that's taking in the word of god and it's a it's a body that's exercising and working out the will of god in terms of the good works that it does in its kind deeds in the miraculous works in the supporting works in the corrective works so it takes in and it expresses out it has a good diet it has a firm knowledge and awareness of what god says and how to grow in the grace and knowledge of who jesus is so that all we're working out is who jesus is ourselves and that's something that we work out together in relationship that's why the body is made up of different members so that we can all be a part of what god is calling us to do a key question that we ask often in this series is why does all of this matter and to help answer that question i want to draw your attention to the heart of what the gospel of jesus christ really is and i put it to you if you get that gospel message wrong it might explain why the body isn't functioning as it should so when we think about the gospel we think about what it is to be saved and notice that jesus came to save us from that tragic disconnection from god a disconnection that we see through our sinful condition a disconnection that brought about darkness death destruction and despair all of the negative things that we're seeing in the world around us can be rooted in and sourced by our rebellion against god and god himself took the initiative to reach out to rescue us rescue us from that and how he rescued us from that is by grace so jesus came and he took on the sins of humanity and he's made it possible for us to be taken out of darkness by grace that's why there's no room for any of us to boast because there's nothing that we could do there's nothing that we have done to even deserve what god has done for us through jesus christ so so far that's a message that certain people are familiar with in terms of the forgiveness of sins and being saved from all of those negative aspects but the gospel doesn't just end there in terms of what we're saved from and what we're saved by but there's also who we're saved for and we're saved for the glory of god indeed we're saved for good works in christ jesus which brings us again to that image of being a part of his body so we're saved from darkness into light we're saved from being strangers and aliens to the covenant to actually being now a part of the commonwealth of the lord jesus christ which now makes us members of the body of christ and members of the family of god that's why it's crucial that we're in genuine 
Christian fellowship. And then we're also not just members of a family, but we're also ministers. We're servants. We're workers. So in the same way that Jesus didn't come to be served, but to serve, likewise, those that follow him are called to serve others, to work out um, what it is to follow Jesus, work out what it is to be like Jesus from day to day. And in that service, we're also given a message to appeal to people likewise, that they too can be taken out of the kingdom of darkness into his marvelous light. And it's not just with a message, but it's with a mission of establishing this kingdom of light so that we can truly affirm that we are the light of the world and we are the salt of the earth, even as Jesus tells us. That is to say, it should matter to us because the heart of the gospel, what we say that we're saved by and saved for, etc., etc., all of that should be the basis of us understanding that the glorious plan of God is the restoration of all things back to himself in Jesus Christ. And seeing that the eternal purpose of God in Christ, see all those who put their trust in him, rescued from the grip of darkness, to his marvellous light, by his grace, for his glory. So it's all about him. That's why it should matter. It should matter because our eyes should behold the amazing love of God in Christ Jesus to rescue us, not just rescue us from something, but to rescue us for something and to rescue us for someone. So we have a purpose in life. We have things to be doing. We are his workmanship created for good works in Christ and because of that relationship that we have with him that should then stimulate us to see what has he called us for why is it so important that we're aware of the mission of God the sent ones with the apostle why is it important that we recognize the responsibility that we have to be mouthpieces of God to really want to share with others what God has to say why should it matter that we're sharing the good news with others and not just leaving it to people, others to do it, but recognising our responsibility to share that good news with others. Why should we have a heart to be concerned that people are brought up under the proper, true teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ, so that their hearts and their characters can be shaped to be more and more like him? This is why it matters that we see these five particular gifts given to help the building of the body of Christ. So let's put that all together then and let's consider the conclusions that we have in the light of our search so far. The first thing is that everything really is dependent on the Lord Jesus Christ. As we look to him, we see that he is truly an awesome saviour. He's a beautiful saviour and he's worthy of adoration and of praise. And we recognise that he has rescued us to make us his own, make us a part of his own body. And so that we discover that in him we are made for good works. And the good works are determined by him because he is the head, he is the source from him, everything flows. And it's not just him giving instructions and dictats as though he, he's just sitting back and having a Kool-Aid. It's actually him being able to instruct and to guide and direct because he has been the example in his time on earth and he will always remain the foundation because he is the one that we're looking to be like so that as we grow to be more like him we appreciate the role of the apostle the role of the prophet the role of the evangelist the role of the shepherd and the role of the teacher and we don't just appreciate their role to sit down and benefit from them we appreciate their role because they equip us to do the work of reaching out to others serving others caring for others building others and then establishing them on the foundation that we find ourselves growing on as well. Now that should affect how we approach life in Christ, how we approach life in church. That should affect us to be asking the question as ever, well, are we growing to be more like Christ? And are we equipped to do the service of Christ? And are we about the business of serving each other? And not only is that our condition but are we also seeking for opportunities to likewise help others share with others support others in their development with the lord jesus christ it should change our thinking 
about what the purpose of church is, what's the purpose of gathering together, what's the purpose of us now being rescued by this glorious news of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in the same way that we asked the question in the previous sessions of, can we see Jesus the apostle? Can we see Jesus the prophet? Can we see Jesus the evangelist? Can we see Jesus the shepherd? Can we see Jesus the teacher? Not only should we be asking ourselves the question of can we see Jesus, but can we see Jesus in us? And can we see Jesus working through us? That's the challenging conclusion that we reach when we consider these five crucial gifts that Jesus himself has said he's given for the equipping of the saints and the building of the body. So as ever on our hints review, hopefully we should see how crucial it is to see the gifts that have been sent to help to build the body. We should be aware of not just what they are individually, but how collectively they should help us to become more and more like Christ. And not only should they help us to become more like Christ, they should also help to define what the work of ministry is and how we can be involved in that by recognizing the role that we can play and also by recognizing the roles that other people play that we're joined with to help to fulfill the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. That should also help us to have some idea as to where we fit in the whole scheme of things where the body of Christ is concerned. And today especially, we should see how a healthy body functions, how it's fit to function in the light of Jesus' commands. And hopefully you should see again why all of this matters in the light of the appreciation of what we're saved from, what we're saved by, and what we're saved for. So that as ever, we can see that as a part of a, the body of Christ, it's good to know how we fit individually and then how we all fit together to function as God wants us to. To an extent, we've reached the end of our exploration of these five ministries that Jesus has given for the building of the body. But we haven't yet finished God's fit body plan as yet, because there's another big aspect that I want us to consider. And that aspect is found in these verses 15 and 16 of Ephesians chapter 4, where we're told that instead we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. So I want to remind us of certain points that we'd made earlier on in this series, uh, points such as the measure. So what's the measure of good body development? And that is we recognize that we're becoming more and more like Christ. That's the measure. Are we becoming more and more like Christ? And the method of knowing if we're becoming more and more like Christ is as we speak the truth in love and as we look to help the other parts grow by us taking our responsibility seriously. So we're being more and more like Christ as we speak the truth in love. That means that we have to know the truth and have the capacity to express it in the way that Jesus wants us. And the process of that is discovering what part do we play and exercising the role that we play, exercising it wholeheartedly, recognizing the crucial role that it has in Jesus's big plan for his body. So that's the method and the process. And notice also how Jesus, the head, is in charge of fitting the body together perfectly. So he's the one that's coordinating everything. He is the one. That's ensuring that the right pieces are in the right places, joined together to function brilliantly. Consider that carefully when you consider what it is to be in genuine Christian fellowship. Who are you with? Who has God placed you among? Why has he placed you among them? What do they have to offer? And when you look at those things carefully and look at that in the light of who Jesus is and what Jesus wants from his body, you can see that it, Jesus has a really good plan as to how he will express himself to the world for his glory. And then finally, I want us to look at the goal. And the goal is to have a healthy 
body that is growing and full of love. That body will be healthy and growing when the whole body takes on board the role of those fivefold leadership gifts, but also notice the role of love. The role of love as seen in the aspect of the truth in love being expressed and also the aspect of how a healthy body is seen that in how we're full of love and how crucial love is. Now, if I was Tina Turner, I might ask, what does love have to do or got to do with it? I might ask that, what's love? Uh, but a second-hand emotion, if you will. But there's something about the question about this kind of love that should lead Christians to dig a bit deeper into the role of what love Paul is talking about here and the crucial role that it plays. And I want us to bear that in mind as we go forward in seeing God's fit body plan function for his glory. In the meantime, here are some prayer points I want us to consider. Let's praise God for the Lord Jesus Christ. It's all about him. He is so awesome and so wonderful. We need to constantly be thanking God that the Lord Jesus Christ has made a way for us to have a right relationship with God once more. And as we praise God for the Lord Jesus Christ, let's also thank God that we are a part of the family of God and that he has also brought us in to the body of Christ to make a difference in our world as we express the glorious gospel of the rule of the Lord Jesus Christ. Above everything else, let's continue to ask God to have that desire to be like Jesus. More than any other desire, let's ask God to have that driving desire today. How can we be more and more like Jesus? How can we express the character of Christ and the conduct of Christ to make a difference in our world? And then let's seek God for ways in which growth can take place. Not just your own personal growth, but the growth of those that God has deliberately set you among in genuine Christian fellowship so that you can work out what this glorious character of the Lord Jesus Christ is. Whether it's in the apostolic, the prophetic, the evangelistic, the shepherding or the teaching and how that will make a difference both in that community that God has placed you in and in the wider world. Finally, let's continue to celebrate God for his eternal purposes fulfilled in the Lord Jesus Christ, who is fitting everything together perfectly. It may not look like it on the surface in your current situation, but when you place your trust and your faith in the one who has taken you out of darkness into his marvelous light, hopefully day by day and relationship by relationship, you should see that he is working everything out, not just for your good, but for the glory and the honour of a glorious God. Next time on Word Search with me, Christopher Dryden, we will be moving the series of God's Fit Body Plan on in episode number 18, What Kind of Love Is This?, where we'll be looking to begin to explore the crucial role that love plays in God's fit body plan. So please join us as we move on to explore what kind of love is this. In the meantime, please remember to like this video as you've watched it and share this video with your friends, your family, your loved one, anyone that you believe could benefit from hearing this word shared. And then while you're here, if you haven't done so, as yet, please remember to subscribe to the channel and turn that notification button on so that you can be notified of future episodes of Word Search and you'll never miss out on being able to share the glorious Word of God with others. If you'd like to support the channel, please feel free to do so. I want you to know that your support means a lot. Whatever that support is, whether it's in kind words or um, emails that you can send, or financial support, whatever support you can offer, it's more than readily received here and it helps the ministry to keep on going. So if you have that support, look to the email address in the description below, get in touch with us and we will see how we can 
receive your support and go from there. The best way that you can support, however, is to put the word of God into action. There are lessons that we're learning here that we want to use to help to shape our lives and our minds so that we're more and more like Christ every day because we want to seek his kingdom first and we want our character to become more like his. So that's the best way that you can really support us by applying what you've heard here. And as ever, thank you so much for taking the time to listen to Word Search on this occasion um, because here at Word Search, we're very keen to find treasure in God's word so that we can be hearers and doers of that word for his name's sake. Until the next time that we explore this wonderful word on Word Search, God richly bless you and those that you love. Shalom.